North Korea gives Russia a tour of the North's weaponry that includes the country's banned ballistic missiles. And Tesla has some competition as seven automakers join together to form a new company to provide EV charging across the country. The rundown starts now. This is Straight Arrow News, bringing you unbiased straight facts. Today is Thursday, July 27th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. Today we got our first look at a meeting between Russia's defense minister and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un as the two countries look to strengthen their relationship. Video released by North Korean state media shows Sergei Shaigu accompanying Kim to a defense exhibition that featured the North's banned ballistic missiles. The defense minister, along with a Chinese delegation, arrived in North Korea this week to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the end of the Korean War, known in the North as Victory Day. The nuclear-capable missiles were banned under UN security resolutions adopted with Russian and Chinese support. This was the first visit by a Russian defense minister to North Korea since the fall of the Soviet Union, and the first prominent visitors to the North since the COVID-19 pandemic. North Korean media reports that Shaigu gave Kim a letter from Russian President Vladimir Putin. Kim reportedly thanked Putin for sending the military delegation and said the visit had deepened the, quote, strategic and traditional relations between North Korea and Russia. In a dramatic turn of events, what was seen to be a straightforward plea deal between Hunter Biden and the DOJ unraveled in the courtroom on Wednesday. Federal Judge Mary Ellen Noraika, overseeing Hunter's tax and gun possession case, expressed concerns over the agreement, even questioning the legality over portions of the deal. The president's son entered a not guilty plea in court yesterday. Though the deal could still happen, for now both parties have 30 days to address the judge's concerns before she issues a decision. The largest electrical grid in the United States has issued a level one emergency alert today, preparing its customers as a heat wave potentially strains the grid. PJM serves 13 states along the upper eastern region of the U.S. Demand is forecasted to reach 153,000 megawatts today. PJM has a generating capacity of 186,000. Other parts of the country are facing similar circumstances. The Texas power grid hit a record high on July 18th and has so far avoided rolling blackouts. Arizona also saw power usage at an all-time high this week. Uh, we're on a path to finishing the NDA uh, this week. It's been good bipartisan cooperation and a string of uh, on Capitol Hill, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell gave his colleagues a scare when he froze and stopped talking mid-sentence near the top of his weekly news conference. He was escorted away before returning a few short minutes later to answer reporters' questions. A staffer said the 81-year-old felt lightheaded and just needed to step away. President Biden called McConnell later that evening to make sure he was okay. Four months ago, McConnell had fallen and suffered a concussion. Seven major automakers are taking a crack at Tesla's dominance in the electric vehicle marketplace by forming a new company to provide EV charging in the U.S. The group includes General Motors, Stellantis, Hyundai, Kia, Honda, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz. While these companies make up about half of U.S. vehicle sales, they only occupy a small portion of the EV market. They aim to roll out 30,000 charging stations in North America, starting along major highways and in cities. While the automakers did not specify how much they would invest in this project individually or collectively, for reference, it cost anywhere from less than 100 grand to more than 200 grand to build just one station. Industry executives familiar with the cost of chargers said establishing this venture could cost multiple billions of dollars. The music world is mourning the death of Irish singer Sinead O'Connor, who has died at the age of 56. O'Connor rose to fame in the 1990s with her version of the Prince song, Nothing Compares to You. The singer was no stranger to controversy throughout her career, including ripping up a photo of the Pope during an appearance on Saturday Night Live as a protest to the church's cover-up of child abuse by clergy. Musicians from all corners of the industry have come out to share their condolences, including Alanis Morissette, Billy Corgan of the band Smashing Pumpkins, and Melissa Etheridge. 
all calling her passing a tragedy and remembering her talents. Her family released a statement Wednesday expressing their devastation and requested privacy. A cause of death is unknown. Thanks for watching Straight Arrow News, where our mission is to bring you unbiased, fact-based reporting. And we're doing just that. Two separate industry watchdogs confirm SAN is reporting right down the middle. So if you prefer the source that gives it to you straight, stay with us at straightarrownews.com and follow us on social media. Unbiased, straight facts, that's SAN. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.